What's going on everybody? Welcome to part two of the Python for Finance series. Uh, in this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is a little bit more on input-output just because I want to make it clear that you don't have to use data straight up from the Yahoo Finance API. Uh, a little bit on that and then also just some super simple graphing examples. So uh, with that, let's get started. So we're going to be working with the exact same data. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this tail. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is do a df.2 underscore CSV. So this is an attribute of all data frame objects that we can do. So we can say, okay, I want to take this data frame, convert it to a CSV, and I want that CSV to be uh, tesla.csv. So we can run that. And once we see it's done, it's done. Um, I can pull over here the, uh, wow, this is getting, acting crazy. Okay, so anyway, you've got now a CSV for, uh, for Tesla. So we click on that, and sure enough, there you have it. Um, that's all your data. Now, a couple of things are going to happen when we convert it to a CSV. Uh, initially, when we pull this data, uh, we had a, well, we can even, we can look at it right now live. So df.head, you can see um, that these are columns, and then this is actually an index. So data is an index, and it's been converted to an index for us. It's just the data reader knows that it, it should be the index. So it's kind of been done in our in our favor. But normally, when you read in a, uh, a CSV, for example, a CSV file is just basically a text file. It's not going to contain information that says this column is the index. So we're going to have a slight issue there uh, when we read it in. So for example, um, uh, so it's two CSV. Now what we could do is, is comment this out. So if you're on idle, um, just real quick too, I'm using idle. A lot of people for data science like to use IPython notebooks or some sort of interactive version of Python. Totally fine. People also like to use Anaconda. Um, totally cool. People like to use PyCharm, whatever. I just happen to like idle. Uh, so in idle, if you want to highlight, uh, if you want to comment out a block of code, you can highlight it all, alt three, uncomment, alt four. Um, not positive that works on really anywhere else. Moving along, uh, so we've converted it to a CSV. We also need to probably comment that one out because uh, we don't have a DF anymore. Oops, press the wrong button. So now what we can do is do, we can read a CSV in. So if you already had a CSV, in this case we have one now, uh, you can do um, df equals pd.read underscore CSV, uh, and then just give the name, so tesla.csv. So now we could do uh, print df.head, we can save and run that. And there we have a new CSV. A little bit was probably off the screen there. There you go. And now you can see that actually date, open, high, low, close, volume, adjust, close, all those are kind of looking the same. So they're all columns and actually our index is over here, zero, one, two, three, four, and it just continues going on. So that's kind of, not, that's not exactly what we wanted. So we wanna have an index. Uh, in this case, we also want a date time index. So what we're gonna do is just kind of, when you read in a data frame, you actually can I think you can say like parse dates equals true, read CSV pandas. Let's look that up real quick. Um, so we pull over read CSV pandas. I think you can say parse dates. Look at all, these are all of the plausible parameters that you can use when you read something with, with pandas. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's parse dates. Yeah, so we can say parse dates equals true so read CSV, let's say if we can get away with this parse, underscore dates equals true. And then we also want to specify the, uh, the index, I cannot remember if, yeah, index call. Index call would be the zero column, like the first one. So we could say parse dates equals true. Uh, index, was it index underscore call equals zero? Make sure, I'm just making sure it's actually still on screen here for us. Okay, let's try that, see how we do. Great. So now we actually have date. It is a date time index. We've got open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted close. Awesome. So that's how you could read in information. It also doesn't have to be a CSV. You can read in uh, JSON. You can read from uh, a database like SQL. You can read from Excel files. You can do all kinds of input output with Pandas. And again, I have tutorials on Pandas IO if you want to learn more about what you can do. You can also check out the Pandas documentation. It's super extensive, super useful. 
not all documentation is really useful, uh, but pandas is top notch. So, uh, so anyways, we have the head there. We got everything worked. So let's just talk real briefly about visualization. We're going to get more into uh, visualizing things in the coming tutorials. Um, but for now, let's just say um, we can do df.plot. Okay, so pandas, or, or the data frame objects have plot attributes. So it just will kind of pandas in the back end will handle matplotlib for you. This not always is going to be an option. But for now, we'll just show this. So df.plot, and then we'll do plt.show. If you're on an interactive Python version of any kind, you probably don't need plt.show. This will probably make the graph show. Um, but I need it because I'm not. So run that, wait for it. There we have our graph, and it graphed everything, gave us a nice legend. The other thing I really like, let's see if it works, is the legend should move. Yeah, as you push data in the way of the legend, it's like it figures out where best to go. That's really cool. I, don't, I have no idea in pure matplotlib how to make that happen. It's got to be matplotlib, but I, I don't know. If you know, let me know, because I'd love to know. Anyway, uh, we can see that mostly we're just seeing one line here, and that's the, the volume line, because it's obviously on a much greater scale. It's volume is how many shares of that company were traded, as opposed to the price of those shares. So volume might be in hundreds of thousands or millions, uh, whereas the price is probably less than a thousand. But if we zoomed in, you can click on this little zoom magnifying glass. Uh, if we zoom in, it might, might take a couple tries, but we'll, I'll keep at it. Maybe. <laughs> Come on. There we go. We're seeing something. Again. There we go. Yeah, price. <laughs> but obviously that's uh, rather unfortunate. So if you just want to plot something very specific, you can reference the specific columns in pandas, like so. It's kind of like a dictionary. So we could say, okay, we just want the adjusted close column. So great. So we'll just plot the adjusted close. And there we have it. And of course, you don't have to only do that with uh, when you plot. You can actually print um, df adj close, and there you have. That's like all. This is not all of it. It's truncated through the middle. But anyway, that's most. Or that's like the data. So you can reference that. You can also reference multiples. Um, <clears throat> so you could do something like. Uh, whoops. I'm trying to make some space in here. That's not going to work. Um, my monitor is a little too big. So I'm recording in 1080. It's a 4K monitor, so the screen goes down. Anyway, uh, what we can do instead is we could say uh, print df. So it's a first the brackets, some more brackets. And then let's do um, open and high. Print df open high. And let's do dot head there, just so we're not exhausting a bunch of resources. Okay, so that's how you can kind of just reference very specific things. We'll get more into various manipulations and how to like basically select certain bits of data and all that. Uh, in the coming tutorials, just know that um, there are a lot of options for, for using uh, pandas to do all kinds of data analysis. Okay, so that's going to conclude uh, part two of the Python for Finance uh, tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, we're going to get more into some of the things that pandas can do for us and running kind of more um, manipulations on data and how to do start doing calculations on our data. So stay tuned for that. Uh, questions, comments below. I'll see you next time.